improving the opportunities and quality of life of women in Durham. That's the lofty mission that the Durham's Mayor's Council for Women is tasked with. It's a goal that the members of the council take very seriously and that they've already started working toward. After having just completed the council's first year in existence, this group of formidable women is already making a difference in Durham. Welcome to City Life, I'm Beverly Thompson. Joining me to talk about the work and the goals of the Council for Women are Council Chair Anita Alam and Vice Chair Gloria De Los Santos. Welcome to you both, and thank you thank so much you. for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. So, Nita, let's just get started with you. Um, how did the idea for the council come about? Yeah, so the council came about with a lot of organizations that are mainly run by women across the city of Durham coming together and proposing to the city council and to the mayor saying that the women of Durham need representation in a council, and that's how they all came together and pushed for it, and we were able to establish this. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. That simple, huh? Oh, well, there was a lot going on behind uh -huh, the scenes. Gloria uh -huh. was one of the was, founders uh -huh. of the council. Okay, so Gloria, we've already mentioned that the mission for the council is to provide opportunities and improve the quality of life for women in Durham. That's not a small goal at all. Mm -mm. So what does this really mean in terms of day-to-day -day accomplishments for women? Well, there are a couple ways that um, we do by promoting the interests of women mm -hmm. um, in general and what Durham women really want mm -hmm. and the mayor women's council actually give them that window of opportunity to bring those interests and those concerns to the table mm -hmm. another way is that we're a lesion between women and the city we open that door for women again to come and talk about different things and as a group we consult that and we provide equal opportunity for all women to come and promote and protect their ideas uh -huh. on their mission great so Nida, why do you think the council is so needed here in Durham? I think it's really important that we have a council, as Gloria said, as this bridge between the women of Durham and the city council and giving them the opportunity to feel that their voices are heard, as well as not just the women of Durham, but we also included in our bylaws non-binary mm -hmm. people, as well as transgender women, and making sure that everyone who wants to have a voice has that opportunity and has a space that they feel welcome and safe. Mm -hmm. So Gloria, what are your thoughts on that? Why do you think the council actually, is Actually, she actually said everything I was going to say. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> I, I do want to add in more of an advocacy speak, um, piece to it. Um, as advocacy director for a nonprofit, it also gives women a chance to engage in current policies, mm -hmm. as you said, and mm -hmm. also promote their work that is actually needed or issues that are actually needed in the community to uh -huh. address. Uh -huh. um, it gives women an opportunity to become leaders and hopefully from becoming leaders in their community they can actually run for different positions in the city or maybe on the council or even state itself uh -huh. so it opens the door for different avenues for women to participate in. Okay. Uh, Nita there are nine women on the council how are they all selected? So originally so we're in our first year of the council mm -hmm. and Originally, they opened up the applications, and I believe there's about 38 applicants, and the city had already predetermined that they needed um, a set number of at-large members and then members from each ward, mm -hmm. and then they designated all of us for different sectors. So there's the civil uh, rights, there's arts, there's public safety, and so there's others, and all of us that were appointed were selected based on our skill sets that aligned with one of these sectors, as well as which ward or at large we mm -hmm. were in. Okay, so they tried to make sure that a lot of different areas were represented yeah. and covered, mm -hmm. huh? So Gloria, uh, you're the Director of Action North Carolina, That's grassroots right. group that works toward social and economic equality. Right. Okay, and you hold an at-large seat, I'm told. Uh, yeah. And uh, tell us about your background. Oh wow, we don't have time for my background. Well, just a little <laughs> bit of it. Okay. Just a little bit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I am a director for Durham here for Action NC. I'm also the statewide director for a Stand with Women and Families campaign and also a Rage Movement, which is race and gender equity that uh -huh. caters to women's issues. Uh -huh. So this particular um, Mayor's Women's Council was a big par portion of that. It was a huge creation to show that we have the strength to be able to develop something and keep it actually running. Uh -huh. um, our 
goal is to not only do this here in Durham, but to do it across the state. Uh -huh. And the reason why it became so important, because it's the first in the South. It was very important that we get this board up and running and make sure that Durham becomes the first. Mm -hmm. Durham loves being the first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, for me, pertaining to this for my job, I just think that it's just one accomplishment right after another that I can say, hey, look, you know, girls, I have two daughters. Uh -huh. um, you look what your mom, we not only your mom created history, but the women that I work with created history. And this is just one stepping tool to actually doing that. Amazing. That uh, shows why you were a perfect fit oh, for this you. job. <laughs> so, and Nita, you are a MetLife analyst, project analyst, yeah. and the third vice chairwoman <coughs> for the North Carolina Democratic Party. That is awesome. And you're an immigrant as well and Muslim and you represent the civil rights and justice mm -hmm. um, category on the council. Tell us about your background and why you are a great fit for this position. Yeah, so I actually started getting more involved in politics when I was still in college in 2015. And what really motivated me was it was in the county of Durham, but the city of Chapel Hill, whereas mm -hmm. um, my three close friends were murdered in their homes in the Chapel Hill shooting. Mm -hmm. And that really pushed me to realize that what I wanted to do with my life was have an actual impact that could I could see directly at the local level. Uh -huh. And I started getting involved with the presidential campaigns. And then after the campaigns, I got involved with the party. And I really learned how to become an organizer at the grassroots level uh -huh. and use that to really be someone who advocates for marginalized people. Being a minority Muslim woman, I've kind of checking off all the marginalized boxes, but mm -hmm. being able to engage people who look like me and are scared to be involved in the political process but show them that it's it's not as frightening as it seems to be and that mm -hmm. it's the impact that you make it may seem far away but once you actually get into it you can very quickly make a lot of changes uh -huh. how do you go about getting women engaged in your mission so i think that's been really important for all of us is that making sure that We've all been selected to this council with different sectors um, and different wards or at large members and using that, the resources and diversity of experiences that we have and using that to reach out to the community and asking people to come to our meetings and engage them and asking them exactly what do they want the city of Durham to have for them, mm -hmm. making sure that we're not just dictating what the city, what we want for the women of Durham, but actually hearing from community members. Mm -hmm. How do you keep track? of your success or how will you keep track? So, Have you wow. thought about that? We actually oh, just <laughs> had to report so every year, uh -huh. the, each of the councils under the city uh, report to the city council of what their accomplishments were. So mm -hmm. it was a daunting task for us because mm -hmm. we were trying to figure out like, what did we accomplish? Right. And we found that like, you know, when we started putting the report together that there was actually a lot that we got done in a year mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. most of that was because of the people, of the women coming to us and telling us what they needed. I see. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you both to tell us about the other members of the council. And if you'll take four and take three, then we oh, can. Wow. So we have some very powerful, dynamic young women that are on the council that come from very different backgrounds, um, that bring de very different values um, to the m council itself. We have Nana Ashante Smith. She is a Wake County Assistant Attorney and also a political action committee coordinator for the People's Alliance. Mm -hmm. She represents us, the public safety sector, okay. which she brings a lot of value to what we're actually doing because mm -hmm. she's keep everything in what I call legal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she bring a legal form of that spend to what we can and what we can't do. And uh -huh. she bring that to the table. Uh -huh. Then we have Mina Exikpe. Um, she's an activist. Um, she's also a recent grad from Duke University, and she's an organizer with You Can Vote. Um, she also represents the Ward 3. She's a very young activist, a very powerful, very outgoing young lady, very powerful speaker. She is, she is a strong, powerful young woman. Mm -hmm. um, we have Amy. Um, Amy Coach. She is a family nurse practitioner and she represents the housing and economic development sectors, which she brings the health component to the housing component to actually address issues around housing. Uh -huh. And then we have Ashley Canty. She's a mother and a community activist and the president at the McDougal Terrace. She mm -hmm. represents Ward 2. Mm -hmm. She's a very, another very powerful young woman that brings a lot of diversity to the table because her role actually spreads from 
just being a president and, and working mom, she works with children as also. So each one of these mm -hmm. women bring a very unique quality to the table that is very needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Anita, if you would tell us about the other three. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we also have Rebecca Meal who she has been an amazing organizer in the city of Durham. She was actually the one who, after the explosion in Durham, she started mm -hmm. organizing to raise funds for the businesses and people who are uh, impacted. And they raise so much money that now they're setting up uh, a way to continue funding anyone who needs immediate mm -hmm. help from. Mm -hmm. And she also helped uh, organize the payout, the student lunch debt yes, for did. students in Durham who had lunch debt, which is, something that's really close to all of our hearts that no child should be hungry and no wow. child should be ashamed yeah. of having to ask for a meal. Right. And, and we also have Megan McCurley, who is the program director for America Reads and America Counts at Duke University. Uh -huh. And she's an amazing Latino organizer that's really, her connections have been really instrumental in the accomplishments that we've had um, after the hurricane uh, last year that really devastated our East Coast. Mm -hmm. We organized a di diaper drive and with her connections with um, Diaper NC, mm -hmm. Diaper NC That's they, correct. we were able to collect over 10,000 diapers wow. to provide to the people over um, in the East Coast. And that was mm -hmm. children's diapers and adult diapers for the elderly. As well, we have Dolly Reeves, who recently just left our council. Um, she's moved back to the west, uh -huh. uh, the mountains. But she was an amazing organizer, and she's really an advocate for the mothers of the city and making sure that their voices are really heard and making sure also that we're politically engaging the women who come to us. Uh -huh. And then she's, since she's left our council, we have a new member, Grace, who's a new transplant to Durham, and she's absolutely amazing. She's a uh, nurse, mm -hmm. and she's done a similar work uh, where she she came from Orlando, mm -hmm. Florida, and the work that she were doing on the council, she actually was doing the similar work on a council in Florida. Wow. So Great. being able to see how she's going to, what she brings to the table and her experience in having this council, since we all are new, mm -hmm. so she'll mm -hmm. have a little bit more experience than us. An amazing yeah. group mm -hmm. of diverse women. Oh, yeah. yes. And that is wonderful. Yes. And that was the most important piece, having uh -huh. that diversity there and that activism there mm -hmm. is very important. Yeah. So, Gloria, I know you just completed your first year, and I feel like you already touched on some of your accomplishments, <laughs> but are there any other accomplishments you'd like to talk about? Oh. Um, <laughs> There are so many different things. We Again, we would love to bring more leadership to the table, mm -hmm. um, invite more people to our meetings so they can sit down and bring their information mm -hmm. about what changes they would like to see and how they can actually be involved. Mm -hmm. The one of the things that we can do is form committees and inside those committees, they can help us with those issues that the community bring. Mm -hmm. I would love to see more people bring um, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we are participating in, and Nadia can tell you a little bit more about that, is the um, uh, providing free services for individuals around affordable housing uh -huh. when it comes down to for attorney fees mm -hmm. and, uh, and other things. And she can tell you a little bit more about mm -hmm. that. Usually they're women, right? A majority of the process of the time, there are women, women. and children mm -hmm. that are in the process of being evicted in, yeah. um, into the streets, which is a big issue nowadays. Yeah. And gentrification, as you can see, is right. a major part of that unaffordability of housing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are in the process of working with a small group mm -hmm. to actually bring legal aid to that community mm -hmm. or address legal issues that they might have for uh -huh. free. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that we are currently in the process of doing um, and then there's several other things that we haven't we can't tell you just yet oh, okay. we love to surprise you okay uh, and we're gonna have to have right. you back then. oh yeah definitely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Anita, i'm sorry i can ahead. tell you a little uh -huh. bit more about that did you want to build on that yeah so one of the things that's part of our mission that we really find important is that when we look at the women of German, the issues that they face, a lot of times it's a cycle. Mm. And that what we're trying to do as a council is break that cycle and help uplift these women and make sure that they have the foundation that they need to build their, a life for themselves and mm -hmm. for their children so that uh, future generations can be able to have a happy and healthy life in the city of Durham. And that's mm -hmm. what we're mm -hmm. hoping with partnering with uh, the f legal uh, organizations that will provide free legal services to residents of Durham, that they'll be able to get this foundation, because a lot of times if you think about affordable housing, if you need a certain amount of money for rent, mm -hmm. you can't afford to be paying for legal services. Right. Right. And so if we can take that out of the factor, uh -huh. we can help women continue to 
provide for their families mm -hmm. while providing that support that'll help break them out of that cycle. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Sounds great. I mean, just an amazing mission. Uh, are there any other projects that you're working on for the upcoming year? Right now, that's our current um, project, and that's okay. going to happen within the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, it will be happening in August. Mm -hmm. um, after that, we're probably going to do something around the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't really thought about what we're going to do yet, but uh -huh. most of the time we usually talk off and after work, mm -hmm. um, and we get creative and do different things on how, what can we do that is we can make a huge effect in that community. Uh -huh. um, I have several ideas, but um, I'm bringing them to I'm the table. I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Gloria, how can women find out more about the Council for Women and who should they contact if they want to Excellent bring question. Up an issue with you? Excellent question. They can actually call the Durham City um, hotline, which is 919-560-4166. Uh -huh. That is the Durham City Clerk. Um, the Durham City Clerk usually email us um, everything that comes in or mm -hmm. they'll let us know that we need to return that phone call or that email mm -hmm. or you can contact us directly we're human we can um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of us see us online and in the streets you can contact us so you can actually come to one of our meetings and just sign up to speak we're there okay. um, we bring those issues to us and that is exactly what we would like for All people right. to do is there anything else either of you would like to add just to add to that, for our meetings, we're currently we meet every second Tuesday of the month at uh -huh. 6 p.m. in Durham City Hall in on the City second Hall. floor, okay. on the second floor in the workroom. Uh -huh. So, and they're open to everyone. So, anyone who wants to come, please feel free. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank yeah. you both. Thank, Thank you. you. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that does it for City Life. Don't forget to follow us on social media and watch us on Durham Television Network and on YouTube. And don't forget to listen to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you so much for joining me to learn more about city life in Durham.